meeting to order and do a roll call. Duke Nick here. To carry in here. Over here. And see the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I don't believe we have any citizens here, and the correspondence has a special item, so we'll use it later. We need approval of our minutes from the May 16th meeting. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, next item will be the uh, voucher list. We need approval for two. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Here. We have a report on the water system. Okay, good evening. Let's start with uh, water hydrant. Wait a minute. Uh, let's just put it on the record. Let's acknowledge that we just had an addition to the meeting. There he is here. Apologize. Proceed. Okay. Water hydrant at 8024 Chapel Hill Drive and Beacon Hill Drive was hit. The hydrant was repaired and a police report was obtained. Invoice and repair and labor was sent to the driver's insurance company. Item two, it's basically the same thing. Hydrant was hit the corner of Parkwood Drive and Park Edge Circle. Got the, got the police report, the insurance claim was put in and uh, reported. Third one, the water hydrant located in Hobby Lobby's parking lot on South 27th was hit. The hydrant was repaired. Unfortunately, this was hit and run and no police report was obtained. There was no uh, lot camera available for review. We repaired a water lateral leak at 8715 South 84th Street. Uh, this was called into the utility after the guy almost dropped his lawnmower through his lawn. The water uh, lateral was repaired and put back into service. Restoration has been completed. Saputo cheese uh, water flow rates to, to the factory were finally completed and verified by the Franklin Water Utility. Uh, the water line to the Rise Upstart business site on Marnock Drive has been completed. Our meter changeout program is moving forward once again. We're making good uh, progress. Uh, Are we on target? No. No. We, we're, make, we're getting close. Still waiting on testing? Uh, we're waiting on meters from last year yet, but it's just summertime getting uh, appointments and everyone on board again. Uh, the city's uh, summer road project has started, and this means uh, we're putting uh, somewhat a lot of attention on the mailboxes, making sure they're done right and completed inside the project perimeters. And uh, on the back of your sheet here, due to higher than usual spring temperatures towards the end of May and into the month of June, the utility is incurring higher than normal daily flow rates. And uh, if you have any questions, we can answer them. What's our normal average day? So 3.3 for May. And then? Yes, what the average day was. And what the normal average day? Yeah, 2.8. Two 2.8. Eight. Two eight. Yeah, for the year. I can't remember hitting a five this early. I mean, we almost did it in May. <laughs> we yes. thought we had it, but yeah. I, I noticed that. Last year, our so, first five million so gallon July. day was the middle of July, July 25th. Yeah. We had the 12th of July. It's dry. It's dry. One other quick question. We usually 
get hydrants in the middle of winter? Is there something unusual for these who are located next to the Hobby Lobby one? Uh, the first one, there was alcohol involved. Bob stopped that, and Bob stopped a couple of cars going down the road. And the uh, second one, the woman veered because an elderly gentleman stepped out in front of her car. She veered to miss him and took the hydrant out. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, you skipped over 4B or 4A. Introduction, new finance and treasurer, Daniel Brown. So he's not here, actually. Yeah, I thought uh, she wasn't here. So yeah. We were passing on it. So I, I, I did want to introduce um, uh, Kelly Hirsch is the director of administration. Hello. And uh, of course, you all know John Nelson, mayor. Um, Danielle Brown, I, I talked to her, participating in her to here tonight, but uh, I talked to her about um, uh, really like to get you guys back on a, a monthly uh, finance as far as where things stand. You guys have basically been running for two years, and I appreciate your patience for all the last year. Really, I think, I think you got one finance report when it came budget time, but uh, other than that, we basically gone, go back to when Paul was last year. Uh, I told her I really want to get back to doing everything monthly, and then also on the credit <coughs> reports, going back to you know compares to how does this look versus you know historic. Those kinds of questions you get about the how does this look historically, and rates per unit are going down or up, and, and those kinds of things. So, uh, hopefully, she'll be here next month. Are there any more questions about the uh, water performance report? Well, let's go on to unfinished business. Water leak policy. In your packet is the uh, um, spreadsheet. So we uh, finally, Common Council, we adopted the new policy for the water leak policy. If you recall, with PSA, <coughs> they don't care what we do as long as we're uniform and consistent. You will say in the precedent. Um, I'll probably tweak this a little bit, but I'll, I'll probably put together a report something like this for uh, future issues like this. So on the first page, 615.3, the 7301 South Trinity Court evaluation, and if you recall, they did, once upon a time, sign the document that allows us to discuss their, their uh, account and meetings. So what I did was I took the readings, uh, <coughs> dating all the way back to 322 of 2018. Um, Convert those to gallons, and then based on the number of days in the in the uh, billing cycle or between readings, actually uh, figured out an average gallons per day. That's what that GPD is for. I took that that uh, table and I put up or right the raw data. Uh, the highlighted number is the number 6305. That's the that was the average gallons per day. That was the month that they disputed. So what I did was I took that out and just made that zero. That's what the next table is below that. The removing leak month, that's what that table looks like. So the average uh, went from 25, 65 uh, gallons per day in the, for the September billing down to 1304 for the, for the, for the uh, September reading. So when you look at that, 1304 was a typical gallon per day uh, for that quarter. So the 91 days between meter reads, uh, so many gallons for typical bill. So what I did was I split that up. So we we sell water, um, or we, we sell water 504 for the first uh, thousand gallons uh, per thousand for the first 10,000 gallons, 524 for the next 10,000, anything above 20,000 gallons, for 564. So that's the rates we charge people when we purchase water at 312 per thousand gallons. So when you carry that over, the first thousand. Right, first 10,000 gallons, uh, their bill would have been $50.40. The next 10,000 gallons would be $52.40. And the balance over that, again, this is based on the 1304 average, the difference is 566. And you just work your math. So typical bill for wire usage would be 659.27. And then they would pay an excess bill. So that's based on the 312 uh, number. That'd be the $1,400. So the total adjusted bill would be $2,079. Uh, for their previous bill, they had $3,226. So they're saving over $1,100 uh, 
eleven forty six. So, unless you see something you'd like to tweak in the math, um, I've also included again a copy of the policy as adopted, um, copy of their letter, and then a copy of where I, I got all my numbers from, and then a copy of the bill, and then a, a fact sheet, if you will, that our staff put together talking about what happened. So, we'll keep this in the in the file. Uh, for the minutes, and so therefore, someone would ask what we did and why we did it. Documentation. So, unless you have any questions, or you got a blank in September of 2022. So, it was 6305. So, what I did was I just basically went that, took that number out, and then I recalculated the average bill for a September for a September bill. So, the the, the table above was the if you consider the 6,305, the average September bill was 2,565. But in reality, if I just take that number out, see we're gonna put that back what the average should be, that brings the average for that bill down to 1,304. So um, it does look somewhat odd because in 2018, your bill was for 2,798 um, gallons, 1,000 gallons, and for 2021 is 3,205, so those, those are roughly the same, but then there's 2019 and 2020, I don't know if they were on vacation those months or what, but there was basically nothing that they used in those months, so maybe they just didn't use their sprinkler system or something. So, but um, if you consider, if you average the 2798, the 394, the 124, and 3203, that gives you an average of 1304. That's the number I assume that that, that blank would have been. No, it's up to What's that? Seems like you're not going to be a whole lot closer to 27 or the 32. That would be normal. Though. I could recalculate based on just taking the 27 and 32, saying that 2019 and 2020 appeared that they didn't do any irrigation, so therefore those should be thrown out. I would tend to agree. Those two years seem like they're an anomaly that they're, you know, they must have been one year or something. They didn't get water. Um, but I completely agree with you. All of a sudden, you throw in those two years, it takes the average way down. Right. The average, you know, the other two months, um, even the June for those two years, right. or, you know, even if you average the June and September for those two years, September and So, I mean, to me, the average would be more around the 3,000 gallons per day, or the 3,000 yeah, gallons per day than the. Uh, yeah, still roughly half of what they used in 2022. So. Yeah. So, if that would be your motion, so I would, whatever the numbers would come out to be, but I'll take those two, I'll take the 2019 and 2020 numbers and throw those out. And I'll average the 2018 and 2021 numbers. Yeah. Is that the motion? That would be the motion. Okay. And then I'll recalculate as the rest of the methodology. That just seems more reasonable. Right. Right. Got to wait for a second. Good opinion, Jeff. Well, the only we have a policy, and we want to make sure we're following. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure the policy. Uh, right. and the policy is written like typical. Bill would have been right. So there's a lot of discretion there. But whatever, from my understanding, whatever we do now, however we resolve this now, is how we're going to have to resolve bills in the future. Wow. Correct. So I'll do some kind of chart like this. The methodology. So I, I would expect. I most just don't want to box this in yeah. to a corner right. where we're starting to throw out rates or throwing out years. Well, I I, I understand, yeah. but it. it I don't want us to all of a sudden later have to defend why we threw out certain years versus other years. The average is the average. So I would suggest it's not average, it's typical. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's a typical similar yeah. utility water bill. Okay. So the, I would argue that the, you know, a typical, You're saying the typical a similar is not 394 and 124 gallons per day. Similar would be. 
the 2798 and 3203 gallons per day. Those would be similar. So I would suggest to you that your motion should indicate that because 2019 and 2020 appeared no irrigation happened, then you could discard those in your typical bill calculation. Okay. Okay, I withdraw the motion, and then um, my motion would be to recalculate the bill. Um, for the typical similar utility bill that in 2018 and 2021, based on those volumes which have irrigation in them, and then discount the water above that at the lowest at the wholesale rate. For the policy. I'll second that. And I'll just speak to it because the, the policy number four says charged at the rate equal to the utilities cost of water provided by the utilities wholesale water supplier. So you're following three and four in the policy, and there's no other policy, no other mention policy of something that you follow. So we can follow the policy. Sure. Before we vote, I just want to make sure that. Does it say somewhere in here that I just don't see it? That the fix has to have been made. Sorry, the fix has to be made. Uh, okay, there's been a leak. So has the leak been fixed? It, I believe it has. They, uh, no, no. Case it has. Does it say in here that uh, there has to have, we have to have proof that the leak has been fixed? Okay. It's kind of an ongoing thing, right? When she was here before she had said that the leak was fixed. You recall she attended one of our meetings. Yes. So I believe at that meeting she one called testimony testified that the leak had been and this was back in September of twenty twenty two for the next two bills are more reflective of what her right. usage would be. I'm but just saying in the policy. Yeah. It, in Should the, it say somewhere that the, the proof that the leak has been fixed? In the future, I would definitely make that part. Keep in mind that all this was created before we actually, I mean, we just adopted the policy. Right. I understand. So we're adopting a policy that we'd like to live with. Right, Dan, you want to live with the policy? Yeah. Good. I like policy. Okay. That's what I don't get in here that it says it is fixed. I would suggest to you that she did show up and testify that it had been fixed. I, I, I'm not so concerned about her as the exact person. I'm concerned about the policy being effective for the next person. So, so maybe you want, I want to amend your motion that we'll, we'll fix it upon a written statement from the resident that we fixed it. That's sufficient proof. That's the question. We're going to go on the resident saying it got fixed, and then if it shows up, I'll ask for proof. Ask it back. You'll ask for proof. Ask for proof. Okay. Contingent upon asking for proof. Contingent upon receiving proof. That's your motion. Can you amend it? Yes. It covers that? Yes. I'll amend it. Second. Okay, but motion's been made and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Thanks, Glenn. Sure, thank you. Okay, next item is uh, E Wholesale Water Supply of Franklin 2024. The board may enter into closed session. Pursuant to Wisconsin Statute 19.851E to deliberate upon information, terms, and provision of the potential provision of public water supply to the city of Franklin as related to the city of Franklin Municipal Water Utility and its customers in 2024 and beyond, and the potential negotiation of terms in relation thereto, including but not limited to potential amendments to the agreement for Oak Creek to provide water and wholesale to Franklin. Potential agreement terms and alternate public water supply sources, including not limited to the city of Milwaukee and the Milwaukee Waterworks. Financial analysis study of long term water supply. 
investing in public funds and government action in relation here too for competitive and bargaining reasons and to re enter open session at the same place that are after to act upon such matters. Just therein as it deems appropriate. Is there a motion to do so? So moved. Second. I roll call. Peterson, I. Duke, and I. Harry, and I. Opener, I. Okay, we're in closed session. Item C. Now let me catch you. Um, so, there is not a common council tonight. Uh, they don't have quorum, so we're having a special meeting next Tuesday. But on that agenda are a couple things related to the new water tower. There is a uh, proposed ordinance that would essentially allow an indefinite deferment to anyone <coughs> if a water main goes in front of your house for the purpose of building a water tower. Uh, so what that does is all the folks on the Lover's Lane, if you go from the tower north, would not be assessed unless they were to ever connect or subdivide their property. So And that goes up north as far as uh, it does it, yeah, so on the south side of Target, like actually there's, there's one parcel south of Target. There's a hydrant there that's what people connect to. So if you just to bring everybody up to speed, um, we did a analysis in uh, last year, actually early this year, Rupert Milky looked at what would it take or how does that affect the fire flow if we only do the north leg to the south leg and basically we're okay. So we decided to do that. Um, in addition, okay, so, so once we get over that, that'll, uh, it, and we will not do the southern part. We'll just wait for a developer if and when that ever happens. That's when that's, that leg would ever be built. So that solves the obstacles that we had for the people that would, you know, we're totally against it. So um, that would happen. Also, we talked to uh, our finance staff and the mayors, and uh, we believe that we just don't have the horsepower to make sure that, that we touch all the bases to get this contract done by December. And we understand that from PSC that if, uh, if you're going to ask for an extension, you better ask for it early. It's tough to get an extension if you wait to the last minute. My fear is that we'll go through the effort to rebid the tower in a water main project and not do something because we have to still have to get a revenue bond or other types of bond those kinds of things so we, we talked to Rupert Milky who's helped us on these kinds of things in the past um, there is a proposal in front of you um, and at your desk tonight there was a revised agreement um, and, I'm sorry yes and you say there's something else we can look at in here yeah. so Regard to the uh, certificate of insurance, professional liability element attached. So. Okay. so I'll have to look at the insurance, but in essence, what we're going to hire Rupert Milky to do is basically help us through the process <coughs> to evaluate it before we can actually go in for a rate increase. Um, we actually have to do a uh, uh, finish up our water impact fee study. So maybe at the next meeting or in July, first meeting in July, we'll have a proposal from Rupert Milky. Common Council that will actually help them with the impact fee study, basically get us all in line to make sure that we can we can award a bid. If we wish. So uh, we we the water utility do have funds available that we can use for this. Uh, again, I'll I'll check the insurance side. It's been crazy. I haven't been able to look at it, but um, so we should really take item uh, A uh, seven <coughs> B with this item. Is that fair? Okay. And that's talking about the contract? Contract. He is. Oh, I'm sorry. I jumped in. I, I apologize. Uh, the Polish Center, I skipped right over the Polish Center. Yeah. Sorry. So. I'm sorry. I'm talking about 7B. Yeah. We're about so we're, uh, we're, talk, we're talking, we're talking about, uh, we're on, uh, Oh, I, I am jumping all over. I'm on C. That's right. Okay. <laughs> all right. Okay. okay back no, I'm going to back the truck up. I, my apologies. I, I should look at the 
mentioned that the talk that introduction got you all confused. It did. Yes. Okay. So seven C is regard. Oh well, six C. Six C. Six C. There we go. Talking about the water tower. So Correct. I did have a discussion with Applied Technologies. Will's here, as you know. Um, and so the question is, we need to, you know, rebid this. And so there is a letter in your packet that uh, Applied submitted to us and basically said they don't need extra additional funds. Um, and the reason why <coughs> is that, one, they're doing good on budget, as I understand. But then during construction, when they gave us a price, they had not anticipated we were going to hire this KLM firm to actually do a lot of inspection on the tower. That's been decided. And if we're going to take off half the water main to the south, or over half the water main, that's less inspection time needed there. So the savings on those two things, plus the fact that they really haven't hit any major overruns, he's, uh, they're willing to hold the price to include this if, if we should. Uh, there's no action we need. I don't believe there's any action unless you need an action for direction. I just, I just need direction when you want to put the thing on the street because obviously you need to get it in. So if we're within the budget, then staff can just provide that direction. Or are you able okay. To go? okay. Have a discussion. Probably some of that will depend on more communication with Rupert Milky and 7B. <laughs> we get but we can take 7B with yeah. us. If, you, you, if can. you can. So now that I've, I've given you the explanation of 7B, right. the conversation, uh, I can apologize for messing this up. But, uh, so do we want to, the question is, do we want to hire Rooker and Milky now and pat through the motion now, or do we want to wait until they give us the proposal with, with the impact fees? No. So the impact fees are going to Common Council. Common Council, this one comes here. Okay. That was my question. Yep. So, so with that, I would move to approve the Rooker and Milky contract as presented. With, with all the types of the, Yeah, with the insurance. Yes. To insurance. With the insurance. Do you want the amount? No. Listed? Okay. Per approval from the utility manager and the city attorney. As stated. A motion. Second. Is there a second? Motion seven and eight. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Okay. Apologies. Okay, I think we're on item A under seven. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah, there you go. Only one topic related to um, I forget what I put in your packet. Well, this is just a dismal. So, long story short, I'll try to make it short. Um, there was a water main, basically the water feed to the polar center, that uh, blew up, if you will, after they located the parking lot. What appears it happened back when they built the center, there was a, uh, as I understand, like a test valve or a test. They had in place that they could test the water. They left that pipe in place. When the rollers for the asphalt folks came over, it basically hammered on that. They pushed it down into a pipe uh, and blew up. And it caused, if you weren't, if any of you were there, it's just absolutely crazy to see it. Probably a third of the parking lot, brand new paving parking lot, was all messed up and basically shoved gravel out and washed it out in their drainage basin and so forth. Did a little investigation back in the day when it was built. We had intended to accept that water easement, uh, but it was never presented and it was never accepted. So there's some discussion whether it was even ours to maintain, but uh, based on some other documents, it looked like we intended to maintain it. Even then, we don't feel that we were at fault. Uh, we didn't cause it. It was their contractor that caused the issue. Um, so we Typically, if it were ours, we would fix the water main, but we wouldn't fix the surface anyway, uh, other than just right over the patch. So uh, our insurance listened to all the details and said we need to deny it. The uh, Common Council voted to claim. So there's no action needed. Asked. There's no action needed. I just wanted to be aware of it. Okay. More could come out of it. We already got B done, correct? Correct. Correct. Motion to adjourn. Yes. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion.